Hey everyone, it's Tyler here, and in today's video, I want to share a thought with you. I wanted to give an example, a very concrete example of taking money and, and putting it either into a liability or to an asset. I've done a video before about the difference between the three, but today I was just thinking about this. I've read lots of books over the past 10 years, and I've studied a lot of people, and I've heard a lot of things, and so... Um, Having the right mindset to build wealth is one of the absolute most crucial things before actually building wealth. And so I wanted to share this example that I had. And so we're going to dive right in. So for this example, I want to take $300,000 and show you three different paths that that money can go down that yield drastically different results. Here we go. Path number one, the path of the liability. Liabilities are things that you pay for and buy that cost you. That is the definition of a liability. A liability is something that you buy that costs you money. And in this example, since 300K is a nice sum of money and you're a car guy like me, that is enough money to get that Lamborghini Huracan that you've always wanted. It's 2020. They just revamped the Huracan with a new um, interior. It's gone from tons of buttons and switches to this nice modern touch screen. It's called the Evo. It's a midlife restart and it starts at 275 or 285 and that gives you a little bit of wiggle room for some options to get that crazy green, orange, and yellow color combination with the specific wheels and color convertible top that you have always wanted for 300k and now you buy this Lamborghini Huracan you spend the three hundred thousand dollars that you have you drive that Huracan off the lot and its value depreciates immediately by a lot of money and it costs you insurance to drive it it costs you gas to drive it it costs maintenance costs that are 10 times the amount of a normal vehicle like a Honda or a Toyota and it depreciates in value meaning that its value goes down every single year so it costs you three hundred thousand dollars to get it it costs you to drive it and maintain it and it will lose value the longer that you have it in fact you can't flip it the day after you bought it for as much as you paid for it that is a liability and that is the fastest way to not get wealthy now here's the second path that you can go down is savings now go ahead and pat yourself on the back at this point for not buying a liability for not buying that Lamborghini but for holding on to your money and having that nice three hundred thousand dollar cushion between you and uh, emergencies and bad things happening to you. That's wonderful. But here's what happens when you save your money. Your money is not working for you. It is simply sitting still. And the reason that that's bad, which we'll talk about on the next step, is because your money can absolutely work for you, even to the point of you actually not having to work. And that's a beautiful thing. And that's the goal. But your money is not working for you. And I got an invitation to open a savings account the other day that said, you deserve it. And I've seen this ad several places. It was from Citibank. You deserve it, Tyler. You deserve it. You've got a credit card with us. We like you. You need to open a savings account with us at uh, uh, an annual interest rate of 1.82% per year. You deserve it, Tyler. That is squat. 300 grand 1.82% of 100 grand is $1,820. Times three is 9, 18, 27, 36, 45, $5,400. I grew up in a math teacher household, so I can do things like that. So in this scenario, you have $300,000 on hand, which is uh, contributing to your debt worth. And in year one, it's going to make you five thousand and four hundred and a little over five thousand five hundred dollars in one year, which is not a lot. It sets a month or two of income, or not even a month of income, uh, depending on who you are. 
Um, that's just not huge off of $300,000 that could be doing so much more. And so your money is sitting still in the bank while the bank is lending it to people for a mortgage who are going to pay for that money five times over in the next 30 years. And so they're going to make uh, a couple of million dollars off of the $300,000 that you have sitting with them while rewarding you with a whopping $1,800 a year per $100,000 that you have in savings. So again, you deserve it. That's path number two, savings. Path number three is an asset because to accumulate wealth, there always has to be some sort of vehicle that you put your money into that starts to deal in multiplication instead of percentages. And for starters, let me give this example. You take $300,000 and you go and buy a $300,000 home to rent out in the Austin area here. Now, uh, we have several friends here in the North Austin, Georgetown, Round Rock, Cedar Park, Leander area. And if you bought a house here for about two hundred to two hundred and ten thousand dollars in about 2014, 13, 14, 15, over the past five to six to seven years, the house has increased in value 40 to 50 grand. Those houses are worth 250 to 260 now. So that money will make a lot more in appreciation alone, but the value of that house is not the only thing that's gonna happen. So first of all, uh, when you bought that Lamborghini, a Lamborghini is not an asset. So you spent that money and it's gone. With a house, you simply transferred that money into a house and now that house is still worth $300,000 and that's an asset that counts towards your net worth of $300,000 and you could sell that house tomorrow for $300,000 and you can sell that house in a few years for more than $300,000 but while you're renting it out you can rent out a $300,000 house in this area for 16, 17, 18 even as much as 20, 21, 2200 a month. That's a lot better than that 54, 5,500 a year. You can double, triple, quadruple that in a year off of rent alone while also keeping the actual value of that money to your name. Your net worth never changed. You just transferred it into something that's going to appreciate as well as drive cash flow through renters. They're going to write a check every single month that goes into your bank account. So that $300,000 is working a lot harder for you in that scenario than it is at the bank. Now you're making money instead of the bank making money off of your money and giving you exactly what you deserve, which they think is squat. Now, not only that, but you can then borrow against that house and get another one and you can double dip. So now you buy a second property because you've got this property as collateral and you can get a loan for another $300,000 house and now your net worth is $600,000. And yes, I understand there's some debt there, but here's the thing, the cash flow that it produces pays for the mortgage and you may even have a little bit of profit from that. And as you pay on that house, eventually you can leverage it towards a loan for another and another and another and start to multiply that original $300,000 in the value of the homes alone as a cash producing asset that covers expenses with profit left over. That is exactly what a business does. A business makes money, covers expenses, and has profit left over. Your $300,000 is doing a lot more for you in that scenario, especially over the next 10, 20, 30 years. The Lamborghini is going to take all your money, eventually be worth nothing, and you, uh, especially if like you inherited the $300,000 or it came to you from an unnatural means, you'll never have another one. And it will be here and gone, and that's kind of sad. And if you save it, you'll always have a nice little cushion and a little nest egg that slowly grows, but you should keep working because you can't live on $300,000 for very long. And you'll still work until 65 and retire and uh, enjoy the rest of your life. But you always had a nice cushion in the back of your mind. That's great. But we're getting into assets now. Uh, there's so many other things that come to mind. You could buy storage units and now 
you spend that money on storage units. So maybe you've got $300,000, you make a down payment, you mortgage the rest, and then that storage unit produces twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 a month in cash flow. You cover all your expenses and you have a salary of ten k that you can pay yourself every single month left over without working because you've got an asset. Eventually you can borrow against that asset and acquire more. Uh, that's how you get into people who become developers and they start developing commercial property. They start developing um, multiple homes at a time because assets have so much more value than a dang car and then money in the bank. And that is just the truth of it. Now let me give you another example of assets. A business. You invest in a business. You invest in a startup with a great idea. This is what venture capitalists do all day long. And you start to see returns in 12 and 24 months of 10x and 100x. When a good idea is executed well, capital is used responsibly, and then uh, as soon as there is some revenue and some cash flow, a business can be worth 10, 20, 30 times that on paper so they can get larger influxes of venture capitalists or go public and start taking uh, public investment in stock. And a company can become worth tens of millions and hundreds of millions and billions of dollars from a nest egg as small as $300,000. This happens every single day. This is how people build incredible amounts of wealth in just a few short years. The, the lie of get rich quick is that get rich quick is true. Get rich easy is false. It is not easy to get rich 99% of the time, but people get rich quick every single day. And these are some thoughts that I wanted to share regarding liabilities, which is how to ensure that you do not become wealthy and accumulate wealth, and then savings, which will never get you wealthy, although they do offer security, and then assets that give your money a vehicle to cover 10 and 100 and 1,000 times the ground that savings ever will, and liabilities are taking you backwards. They will take all your money and leave you broke. And that is not what I want for myself and my family, and that is not what I want for you either. But the decision is yours. But I wanted to share all these examples, and let me share just another perk that popped in my head. Um, let's say you, you came off of a good endeavor and you profited 300 k Well, you're going to have to pay capital gains on that come the end of the year. For any All your expenses can come out of that, but whatever you profited you'll have to pay 20% capital gains tax. But if you go spend 850 bucks here in Texas and you go to my accountant and you start an LLC and you buy a property to start renting out and you spend that 300K minus $850 on, the, on a property to rent out, well then that's a business expense and you don't have to pay any taxes on it. And you just transferred that into your own wealth uh, into a business, into a real estate holdings company now that you just started an LLC that owns this home and now you're the owner of a business with $300,000 in assets and monthly revenue and cash flow. And then of course in all the examples that I just shared the, it goes on. Now a Lamborghini uh, you can't write it off unless you've got a really successful business and you could do a company car or something. There, There is a level uh, where where you could have a Lamborghini like as a company car as a write off um but you you know you're experiencing enough cash flow to have a $7,000 to $10,000 a month car payment uh well that's an Aventador uh Huracan 456k and an Aventador 789101011k a month but that's not really where a lot of people are starting at so in this example that 300k becoming something so much bigger, producing so much more cash flow. And here is the best part of all. If you're like me and you still love that Lamborghini, once you have assets, once you imagine that storage unit example, and then you acquire another and another and another, and eventually you're seeing thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars a month left over every single month coming your way. It's not going away, even if you blow it. 
Now you can get that Lamborghini for a measly four, five, six thousand, or even the Aventador seven, eight, nine, ten thousand dollar a month car payment out of that money. And the asset produces the cash. The cash pays for the liability. You get to have what Dave Ramsey calls expensive fun. And then if you decide to sell the car, the cash flow doesn't go away. It has nothing to do with the storage unit. You're just directing 50K a month towards whatever you want to. You pick up a car payment, you drive it, you have fun, you decide to drop it, money never goes away. So in the end, assets fuel liabilities, which are expensive fun. Yachts, boats, uh, supercars, and all those things that cost a lot of money and a lot of maintenance. You never pay for those out of your pocket. You pay for those out of assets and you will have a secure situation and expensive fun and a high net worth and massive cash flow. If you're listening to this and maybe you just don't realize this, there are people that see multiple six figures and seven figures a month pass through their hands every single month because of business vehicles and asset vehicles that their money's plugged into. And you just direct traffic, expenses, taxes, anything else, liabilities and fun, salaries. But when you've got cash flow, you've got options and that is create how wealth is created and that is created through assets. I hope this video just helped give you some perspective. I absolutely love this stuff. I love learning about it and the more that you learn the more it affects your spending habits and the way you think about your money and the way that you structure money and the way that you spend your money and the more that you learn the more you'll see your money as something to work for you and you'll value that over especially in the early days driving the truck or the car that you want to drive knowing that one day that can simply be a byproduct and an afterthought of something that can be created in just a few years time that you may not have realized until this point is absolutely possible so i so hope this video helped you out in fact with what i do the reason that I have an online business is the sites that I build, they produce cash flow and they also have value like a real estate property. So a site that's producing a few thousand dollars a month uh, can be sold for multiple times its monthly cash flow, one to two years worth. And so I'm building investment vehicles in the digital world, which is only going to be on the rise for the next several decades. Everything is moving towards online. It is not moving away from online. And that trend is only increasing and not decreasing. And so if you're interested in what I do, it's something that you can do for very, very little money input, which is really great because you don't need to have a few thousand bucks. You're ready to spend and try some things. But for just a few dollars a month and effort, which comes from time, which a lot of us have more time in the beginning than we do money. Um, and I have an offer for the course that teaches you what to do and my coaching that helps you to do it and execute and make it happen. So I'll drop a link to that in the comments below. That's uh, seoaffiliatedomination.com forward slash Tyler. Um, but if you're interested in what I do, just reach out to me. I make these videos just to start conversations with people. And every time it's, it's awesome that people just reach out and uh, want to know more. And so I make these videos for you guys. I want to share my journey and share what I've learned along the way with you. Thank you so much, guys, and we'll see you in the next video.